Okay, go ahead. Okay, so op art is a combination of science and art. The history. During the 1960s, op art, short for optical art, combined two disciplines by challenging the roles of illusion and art, and that is science and art. Op artists developed visual effects that called attention to the distortions at play. Their works relied upon mechanics of the spectator's eye to warp their compositions into shimmering and shifting displays of light and color with abstract and geometric elements. So we talked about all of those things. We talked about lines, we talked about color, abstract, and geometric. We talked about all those things in our elements of art scavenger hunt. Did we get to that the other day? Oh. We didn't get to the elements of art thing? Oh. Okay, well, we, we looked at those things in our quiz, our, our pre-test. So we talked about line and color and those things in our pre-test. Okay, areas of contrast. Hard edged boundaries between light and dark attract attention and become exaggerated through visual perception. Which dot on the on the screen looks darker? The top one on white or the um, black one on They're the same, yeah. The same? Yeah, the same. Okay. Does everyone think that they're the same? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So this it's considered maybe this isn't the best example because it's on the board, but typically this is called center surround antagonism. A black circle on a white background, for example, will appear darker than the same black circle on a gray background. So look at it again and see if after I've said that it, it looks a little bit different, but now it looks the same. Okay. Well, I made this little this little graphic. I did all the shapes, so maybe they have to be made all together. I don't know. But if some people in the last class said they could kind of see it, but if you can't, that's okay. It looks similar to me too. So a similar effect occurs with Herman's grid. grid. First discoveries by the, psycho uh, the psychologist Ludmiller, Herman, in 1870, which ghost-like gray squares flicker at the intersections of the black and white matrices. So if you look in between where the black lines kind of make the, the cross, or they cross the intersection, you can see little gray squares kind of flicker through there, okay? But they're not actually there. Okay, you'll look at it, and it's like, there's almost like a shadow or a ghost-like gray square in between those intersections. Can I have everyone pay attention to this, please? I don't know what you're looking at on your table or whatever, but I want everyone to look up here. Thank you. Okay, so if you look at it, can anyone see the gray squares that I'm talking about? Yes. Okay? So that's optical illusion. Some people can't see it. Okay, so take, come over and stand straight right in front of the, the board. But not in front of the video. Not in front of the, yep, just back here. Yep, stand in front and look at the intersection. Kind of just scan over the entire piece, move your eyes around over it. I see it now. Can you see it? Yeah. So if you look at the intersection, there's no gray square. But if you look away, you can kind of see that there's some floating ghost-like gray squares going on. Okay. Another one is this one. Look for the black dots. Whoa. They turn black. Trippy. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Can you go through your sequence? Yep. So look for the black dots on here. If you can't see them, it's a peripheral vision. Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah. my eyes. So yeah. So you look at it. You look straight on. It's a white dot. But if you look away, your peripheral vision will kind of mess with it. And it's the contrast working there for you. Does that really easy? Yeah. Okay. Ready to go? Okay. So the appearance of motion. If you get motion sickness, this might not be the one for you to do. In 1957, Donald M. McKay discovered that radiating lines, now called McKay rays, created a glimmer of movement. When presented with heavily patterned high contrast images, the eye is drawn to contrast and it can't focus its attention. So if you look down this tunnel, it kind of appears that the, those round circles are shifting a little bit. Does anyone see that? You see it a little bit? Okay. Sarah, what are we doing? Sorry. Okay. Okay, let's just wait to decorate in that until later. I really want your attention up here. Sarah, I like to huh? You have time to call. It's okay. It's fine. Okay, we're moving on. Next one, check this one out. What do you think? They're moving. They're not moving. If you look like in the dot, like in the 
Today, we are going to look at optical illusions and how you can create some. In the 1960s, Time magazine coined the phrase op art to relate to the young artists of that period who were using lines and shapes and colors to create optical illusions. They're very simple to do. We'll show you the basics and then you can create your own. Look at these neat designs. They're all based on the idea of perspective and a vanishing point. Perspective first came into being about 500 AD when artists began to learn how to show things in the distance and things up close. My students say that this is a sign that looks like warp speed on Star Trek. It does sort of look like these things are flying through space. It's very simple to do. We need colored pencil and white paper. To begin our warp speed assignment, let's put a vanishing point in the background. Now, to do this, we always lay our ruler right against or right up on top of the vanishing point. We'll draw a line from here down to here. Then we'll move it over a little bit, keeping our ruler on the same dot, and draw again. The secret to making this work is always making sure that the end of these long colored bars are parallel to the bottom of the paper. So run your ruler up here, make sure it lines up with the side of the paper, and you'll always have lines that are even. Let's do a few more. You'll notice that I never quite go up to the line. Sometimes when you draw, you'll have to come back, line it up again to fill in that area. Now, I'm making my marks very nice and dark so you can see them well on camera. But when you do this, I would suggest that you use a very light line because it's always easier to erase a light line than a dark one. You'll notice that when the bars go out this way, we have to line the ends up with this side of the paper. So I use the line at the bottom to line up and make my ending mark. Let's take one going this direction. Notice again, my ruler always is on the vanishing point. Let's have some of these bars overlap. Notice how my ruler is lined up right on the dot. I'm going to draw one from here to here. And the other side lined up on the dot is going to be from here to here. Again, it's parallel to the top of the paper. And the bottom of the paper. If your line is too long, you can always erase it off. Look how this one lays on top of that. If you really want to have some fun, you can take your ruler like this, draw it from here, line it up using the little lines like this. We'll do this one more time, like here and here. And then I'm going to erase the side. And now the one bar is broken into three sections. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, so what are it's some yeah. tips that she had for us? Okay, so what are some tips that she had for us when doing this linear perspective design? Yeah? I'll do it kind of lightly. Okay, Sarah. Always like match, like line up your ruler with like the like dot. And then what about the ends of them? Like how should we? So we have the two lines going into the dot, but they're not touching the dot. What about the ends? How do we? How do we know how straight that should be? Or does, do you line that up with something? Or you remember? Anyone remember? 
Yep. The edges of the paper. Yep, so if they're um, going towards the bottom of the page, you make it so it's um, parallel with the bottom of the paper. If they're going to the side, then you're going to make it parallel to the sides of the paper. Does that make sense? Okay, so who likes this one? And you would consider maybe using it for your project. That one's pretty cool, right? Okay, so we are going to that looks great. We're gonna do this, and then we're gonna do a little warp speed and water color super super fast. So oh, that's so satisfying. I like it when like the purple color with like those little markers that look like kind of watercolory, mm -hmm. and then they just like fill in the little oh, circle wow. or whatever. Okay, so yep, she filled this in, and okay, now we're gonna look at this one. This is a checkerboard one. Illusions done by two of my students. They're very simple to do. Let me show you how. We'll need a ruler, a pencil, and a white piece of paper. Let's start. I'll draw a line like this, then this, to here, and here. It's a diamond shape. A little off, but that's fun. Sort of warped. We'll take our ruler, and I like using an artistic ruler that you can see through. I'm going to line up this line right onto the black and draw. Do the same thing here. Now we have a diamond inside of a diamond inside of a diamond and so on. We want to make our lines pop out from the center. So let's show how we're going to do that. We're going to draw lines that run from here to here. And we're going to take a line from here to here. You'll notice they're not lined up exactly. And that's okay. I'm going to make it very interesting. Already, you get the feeling that you're going inward or popping out. I'm going to take this bar and break it up into three equal parts. Here and here. I'm going to take my line and break it down to there. And I will bring this line down to here. Isn't that neat? On this side, I'll break it into thirds again. Here and here. I'll line it up here and here. I'll break this one up into three okay, also. Drawing right? yeah. the line down. Okay, so we did it. We're going to watch her color it really, really fast. Okay. Here, the color quicker. Faster. No, she's what you want, you can't. And then she's going to outline it. So we had some implied lines first, which was just the separation of the color. And then we had some actual lines added with actual. the black. Now, this is another one we can do. I'm not going to demonstrate it. We're just going to speed through it really quick. Just because I found some other ones that I like. But this is kind of like a hot air balloon or something like that. An oval. Okay, and next one. Oh, is this one? Okay. And it's larger as it goes out. You sort of feel it's all just coming in or popping out, whichever way you look at it. This is so easy to do, and it is so fantastic when it's finished. Let me show you how to do it. We're going to start with pencil and white piece of paper. So we're going to make a small dot in the center. And I'll make my dot large enough so you can see. And we're just going to have curved lines which come out. You notice they're very tight at the beginning. And then they just get larger as they go out. Now, we're going to do a series of lines like this, that warp around, and weave in and out.
Let's use orange for this one. And we start just like a checkerboard. We color one, we leave one white. And again, you need to be very careful. If you speed in this, you do get out of the lines. Okay, we're good. Take your time. Do a nice job. Now, like she said, if you rush through this project, you're not going to get a super, super successful piece. You have to take your time, color in those lines, because that's going to make it an even better optical illusion. Okay, here's a different kind of warp checkerboard. Okay. Okay, so now I need you to get out your sketchbooks. We are going to do a demonstration together. You will follow along with me. In your sketchbook, you'll have a blank paper. We'll have a blank page. Let's do the first page after the mosaic coaster. Just a little dash 
so that we can come back and make straight lines across our paper. Wait, every half inch. Every half inch. So we're gonna start with um, half inch. So we're gonna go to we're gonna go to an inch. One and a half inches, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four. So you're just gonna continue down, make little dashes at the half inch mark. Thank you for staying focused. I like the volume in here. 
I can tell you're working hard and trying your best. I'm just trying to draw a straight <laughs> Thank you. 